You may have heard that you can use certain tools for manifestation and the law of attraction, such as crystals, oils, colored candles, etc. But did you know that you can also manifest using makeup? Hey Lunatics, it's Lady Luna, and today we're doing a deep dive into the spiritual uses of makeup, both in our modern age and also look at some examples of spiritual makeup uses throughout history. It doesn't matter what your gender is when it comes to this topic, because as you will see, makeup means more than just beautifying your face in a feminine way. Makeup takes many different forms and has been worn by both women and men in ancient history. Makeup can come in the form of a henna pattern applied to the hands, face paint, and much more than simple beautification. Let's look at some examples of spiritual makeup from ancient history and also how you can use makeup spiritually today if you so desire. Firstly, one form of spiritual makeup that may come to most people's minds is the wearing of a bindi. This is a traditional Hindu practice and has very meaningful roots. The red dot is called a bindi, derived from the Sanskrit word bindu, which means a point. According to the Hindu culture, there are various psychic energy centers in the body called chakras. Among them is Ajna, the sixth primary chakra situated between the eyebrows. Ajna is also known as the third eye. As per the scriptures, meditating on Ajna enables the human soul to see what the physical eyes cannot. It helps you attain higher levels of spiritual conscience. Once you attain wisdom from the third eye, your thoughts and actions gets cleansed leading to the making of a better human being and thus helping with the formation of a virtuous society. Another ancient and spiritual application of makeup can be found among the ancient Egyptians. In ancient Egypt, the makeup just did not serve cosmetic purpose. It had medicinal and spiritual benefits too. Makeup, especially around the eyes, was used to imitate the gods and act as a spiritual protection from evil spirits. It was believed that this makeup would provide the ancient Egyptians with protection from the gods Ra and Horus. Ancient Egyptians believed looking beautiful was important even after they had died. It was vital that they were to look beautiful in front of the gods when their judgment day arrived. Egyptians mostly used galena, also known as coal, for eye makeup. This product was typically ground up and then applied liberally using wood, bone, or ivory. Coal was used to create the dramatic eye makeup looks we so often associate with the ancient Egyptians. This product was used to paint the eyes black and create the illusion of an almond-shaped eye. It was believed that the black eyelids would protect the eyes from the sun. This was mainly due to the soot used in coal. The almond shape was also a reference to the god Horus's falcon eye. We owe the sacred cat eye looks that we use today to the Egyptians. This coal product was also liberally applied to statues of gods on a daily basis. Cleopatra's famous red lipstick was created using red okra, carmine, beeswax, flowers, fish scales, and crushed ants. Malachite provided the famous green pigment we so often associated with ancient Egyptian makeup. It was especially popular for creating the unique green shade used for eye makeup. We tend to see this used on the eyelids, the brow bone, and under the eyelids. Ancient Egyptians were even fond of eye glitter, which was made by crushing the iridescent shells of various beetles and then mixed with an appropriate powder for application. Not something fancy, however, it is much more environmentally friendly than the microplastics we find in today's glittery eyeshadows. Makeup was worn by men and women in ancient Egypt civilization because to protect their eyes from the sun or to look very beautiful in different shades, even the very poor and the ever rich wore this every day. The shade of makeup that they used was called K-O-H-L. It looks like this, guys. And what was so important about it, because they used to able to put different shades for different types for ceremonies. And it wasn't just a purpose for them to look beautiful. It had a religious and ritual type of thing they used for it. It was able to protect and warn off the spirit. So when they wore it, they were not against bad omens, seen as an all-seeing eye. So a protection against evil deeds. It was one of the obsessions of beauty and makeup in Egypt, guys, because they wanted to see this beautiful protection against the sun and as well prepare for their journey in the afterlife so when they were buried in the sarcophagus which are poor to be fair they had deposits of makeup coal and ready to be seen at any time so this in itself was protection rituals magic and all purposes of day in life but where did makeup come from in the first place how did it come to be so widely practiced and what are its spiritual beginnings 
As we know, the first records of human history were found in ancient Mesopotamia, specifically in the area of Sumer around 4000 BC. This is the civilization that brought us the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is an early record of the Great Flood which eerily matches up with the events of Noah's Flood from the Bible. The Book of Enoch, which is a non-canonical book of scripture, tells of events that very closely match up with the history of ancient Sumer, recorded on ancient clay tablets. In both Sumerian records as well as the Book of Enoch, the story goes that in those days there were fallen angels, also called gods by the Sumerians, who came to earth and ruled over the people. They brought great technology and taught people secret knowledge never before seen among the human race. Here are some examples of this from the Book of Enoch. And the angels apparently taught them how to melt down uh, the metals that they found in the, in the earth uh, to make these weapons of war. And then it goes on, he taught the women how to see behind them. That's an interesting one. And the, the link goes, uh, suggests uh, that relates to mirrors. So women uh, didn't have mirrors before that time. Just, just think about these things, they're interesting. Uh, and, and this is apparently considered uh, forbidden knowledge. Um, the, he also, uh, the angel also uh, taught them how to make bracelets and ornaments. So earrings, um, you know, jewelry, things like that, uh, using precious stones. But where? The Mesopotamians really showed their style was in their gold, their work with gold, their work with bronze. Look at these headdresses and crowns. And also putting makeup on their face. These are other uh, things that were considered forbidden knowledge. What about makeup? We know they wore makeup and I'm sure that it was extremely exotic because look at their clothing, look at their jewelry. It was so exotic, it was so flashy that their makeup probably was too. And we know for a fact they wore makeup because a lot of it has remained intact. Like this shell, which is full of eye makeup. A pigment, a powdered pigment in this wonderful blue, which must have been even more blue uh, four or five thousand years ago, to use as eyeshadow. And we know that it went on the eyes because so many of the sculptures that remain have detachable eyes and each are lined with eyeliner, <laughs> sort of. And so we know that they used eye makeup. Since the fallen angels taught human beings how to use makeup, and it made the people vain and sinful, does this mean that makeup is evil? Some people believe this, but the truth is, no. Makeup in and of itself does not cause people to be evil. After all, the fallen angels also taught the people about agriculture, how to use mirrors, how to make metals, and how to make paints and dyes, etc. Are all of these things evil? Of course not. It's what you do with an object that makes it evil, not the object itself. Back then, the people used these objects to harm, corrupt, seduce, and become prideful in themselves. And that was the plan of the fallen angels in order to rule over the people. These evil acts were the true reason why the Great Flood occurred afterward. But makeup is not evil if it's being simply used to boost confidence, cover a blemish, create art, and so on. As makeup was adopted by numerous cultures throughout history from then on, it was evident that not all makeup was beneficial. In fact, some might say most makeup was cursed for a time. This is due to the array of toxic ingredients used to make cosmetics. That often led to severe illness and even death. The most popular look at court these days is a white face and red cheeks. In order to get the white face, we use ceruse. It's a lovely mixture of white lead ore, vinegar, arsenic, and other ingredients. It gives us a flawless complexion, though sometimes some of the ladies who use it do suffer paralysis, madness, and death. For red cheeks and lips, we use cinnabar, a form of mercury. And for darker lashes and brows, we use lead stibnite made from antimony, a close cousin of arsenic. Today, makeup is usually much safer, but there can be times when it isn't, but that will be discussed later on in the video. So, how can makeup be used spiritually today? Many who have studied the Law of Attraction, also called magic, and manifestation, also known as spells, may have heard of something called glamour magic before. Now when I say magic, I don't mean the kind in Harry Potter or other fantasy stories. 
Real life magic is very different than wizards in movies making things appear and disappear with their magic wands. And no, it also doesn't mean evil or Satan worship either. The real life magic I'm speaking of is the law of attraction, learning to shift energy in a positive direction in order to receive a positive outcome. We do this with positive words, thoughts, and behaviors. Makeup can be a helpful tool in shifting this energy. In a real-life glamour spell, instead of shape-shifting like in the movies, the objective is much different. You set an intention to become the best version of yourself. You put on the clothes, hairstyle, and possibly the makeup that will allow you to feel like this best version of yourself, and you act as if you already are that person. This is a great manifestation to practice for job interviews, dates, and other first impression or confidence building experiences. Here are some examples of how some people use makeup in glamour manifestations. With these lashes adorning my eyes, may my confidence rise to the skies. Eyes now lovely like the stars, I capture all adoring hearts. Catch the glimmer on my face. Reflecting back with beauty and grace, raising my spirit higher than before, like shimmering lights galore. The kiss of rose upon my lips, my crimson color of confidence. Bold and brave, I face my day, I conquer all within my way. That being said, I feel like it only makes sense for me to talk about charmed items. And this means to infuse the energy of what it is that you're trying to attract or what it is that you're trying to do into an object. This is my charmed gloss, lip gloss that I have, and it is from MAC. The reason why I use this lip gloss is because it was special. It was something that I went out and I sought sought it like specifically and because I wanted something that reminded me of glamour and what it was that I was trying to bring into my life which is um, I wanted people when I put on this lip gloss and when I charmed it I wanted people to hear my words see the beauty in my intention see the beauty within me and then also find me fabulous and stunning and a head turner this is no everyday lip gloss, not because it's MAC, but because I charmed it. I specifically set the intent that this lip gloss was going to do these things for me. So that's what you should do and that's what you should keep into consideration when you are charming something when it comes to glamour, love, beauty, and attraction that when you put this item on, this is what it is that it's going to do for you, without a doubt, hands down. Much like a manifestation using colored candles or crystals, the colors of your makeup can also play a big part in your glamour magic. As we know, colors can psychologically shift our mood and be a great tool for directing our thoughts and emotions in the direction we'd like them to go. Here are some examples of uses for different colors. First up is yellow. Yellow stimulates both the mental process and the nervous system. It activates your memory in most cases, and it's considered to be one of the happiest colors in the spectrum. Green creates a soothing feeling. It relaxes you both mentally and physically and helps alleviate nervousness and anxiety. Green also offers a sense of renewal and harmony in most people. Blue creates a feeling of calm. It's considered to be a really cool color, not just in terms of, hey, that's cool, but in terms of temperature. It promotes productivity and is considered to be a trustworthy and dependable color. Purple, it's considered to be very uplifting and calming. It's often related to spirituality and it really encourages creativity. And I think that's probably because it melds the stimulation of red with the calmness of blue in one single color. Pink, this is a really wild color. It gives you a sense of energy. Like red, it can also raise your blood pressure it inspires confidence and is considered to be youthful, fun, and exciting. Red stimulates energy, can raise your blood pressure, and inspire action. It also gives you a sense of confidence and protection, and it draws more attention to itself than any other color in the spectrum. Orange stimulates activity. It also increases your appetite. It also inspires social behavior and is considered to be the most controversial color in the whole lot. Why? Because most people have a really strong feeling one way or the other on orange. They either love it or they absolutely hate it. One of the two. Here are some other ways that glamour magic can be practiced. 
I want to reiterate that magic is not like in the movies. I will never be able to look in the mirror and say, I now look like Beyonce. I wish, but that's never gonna happen. What you need to do instead is use magic to be the best, most attractive version of yourself. You will never look like someone else. Instead, try to be the most attractive, best version of yourself. If you think the best, most attractive version of yourself wears like dramatic makeup, wear that dramatic makeup. If you're someone who thinks the best version of yourself doesn't need any makeup, then don't. No one can tell you what the best, most attractive version of yourself is. Only you know what that is. Let's talk about a glamour and what a glamour is. For me, a glamour is any kind of pleasingness or or becomingness that you are putting on yourself for a purpose, okay? You want to become more becoming for a purpose. Perhaps you're going for a work. I've heard uh, this before, that people have cast a glamour to go to an interview. You want to become more appealing, more becoming, then perhaps you think you are. Now, if you already think you're be appealing and becoming, you don't need a glamour. If you want to become even more appealing, glamorous, becoming, beautiful, irresistible, how do you cast a glamour? I cast the glamour on myself. So I must, from within my own being, know, understand, and embody the glamour. This is how I work with a glamour. Every morning, I glamour myself. Every morning. How do I glamour myself? I glamour myself because as I am preparing for the day, I am calling up beauty and I'm asking beauty to surround me like a cocoon. Beauty, beauty. And I have a mantra, it's youthful, beautiful. It's a simple mantra, youthful, beautiful. If you want to cast a glamour, it's to know your beauty, to be deeply in touch within with the beauty and the glamour of your own soul. As we saw earlier, not all makeup is safe or healthy to use, especially for spiritual purposes. Believe it or not, there is still makeup today that contains poisons or that can make us very sick. Here are some to watch out for. The first is knockoff or fake makeup made from cheap and questionable ingredients. I bought these for a fiver each. In the shop, they retail at triple the price. Too good to be true? I think so. These knockoffs may look similar, but their ingredients can paint a very different picture. To see what's hidden inside, we sent our fakes to be tested by doctors at Kingston University, London, and the results were shocking. In the fake MAC lipstick, they found dangerously high levels of lead. Would you expect to find an ingredient like this in a makeup item? No, you wouldn't expect to find lead in lipstick. Uh, we analysed it and we found it to be significantly higher than, than the guideline for lead. It's a neurotoxin, so it can have various effects on things like uh, menstrual uh, difficulties, hormonal problems, things like that. So my advice would be uh, not to be putting it on the face and certainly not to be putting it on the lips. So, if you're going to be using safe makeup that is suitable for spiritual glamours and manifestations, what kind of makeup should you use? I would highly suggest natural makeup that doesn't contain toxins like parabens, formaldehyde, or phthalates, just to name a few. I would also suggest purchasing makeup that isn't tested on animals in order to ensure good karma when using the makeup for spiritual purposes. I like to buy my non-toxic makeup from an all-natural online shop that also has non-toxic skincare, hair products, and more. So I'll be sure to put a link in the description below for those who are interested in switching to cleaner and safer cosmetics. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you found this video helpful in your manifestations. Be sure to push like on this video if you liked it, and also subscribe to see more videos like this. If you made it this far, be sure to comment the secret word of the day, which is glitter. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye!